Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Schlav, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going to stay in Hawaii and talk with Keith Amamiya. Keith is a candidate for Lieutenant Governor of the state of Hawaii. I wanted to ask Keith questions that were outside the box, outside the normal questions he gets during a campaign. Because I think outside the box questions allow a candidate to share his wisdom, his manal with voters and allows voters to get a deeper insight into the candidate's personal experiences and views. Welcome Keith, how are you? Thank you very much for being my guest today and being willing to take my out of the box question. Aloha Mark, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your program. All right, well, let's get started. As you know, I, I have been a lawyer. That's, that's what I did for well, going on 50 years. Uh, you were a lawyer for a few years, and I got a couple questions out of the box for you. Why did you become a lawyer, and why did you give up your career as a lawyer? I became a lawyer because my family uh, had a history of, of uh, many of my relatives, my father and others uh, going to law school. So it was something I naturally thought about doing uh, after college. I also thought that being an attorney would open doors to other job opportunities, even outside the practice of law. Uh, like it or not, uh, law permeates every aspect uh, of our society, including uh, in terms of jobs out there, and that it's always um, handy to have a legal background, legal experience in no matter what job you, you choose to pursue. Um, I was a commercial or business litigation attorney for seven years, and I don't regret it one bit. It, it was invaluable in terms of the experience I learned, advocacy skills, uh, learning the, the value of hard work, long hours, uh, pressure under tough situations, um, appearing before a judge, representing your clients, writing skills, and, and just overall long-term strategic planning skills. So it was a great uh, uh, background for me in terms of the other things I pursued afterwards. Um, I left the practice of law because Although I enjoyed litigation, I wasn't sure I wanted to do that the rest of my life. And uh, somewhat out of the blue, the opportunity to become the executive director of the Hawaii High School Athletic Association was presented to me. And I decided to take a leap of faith and totally switch professions and, and take that opportunity at the age of 32. And, and the rest, they say, is history. Okay. So... And, and being a lawyer may have helped you get that job, but let, let me ask you a question. Now, I mean, you have a son in college and uh, what would you tell him about becoming a lawyer if he was thinking of that? I mean, would you, would you tell your son the legal profession is something that would be good for him? Or what would you say to your son? I would tell them if that's something you're interested in, then, then go for it, uh, but be prepared for you know three more years of school, uh, three more years of, of difficult schooling. Uh, law school was, was, was tough, was rigorous, um, and, and uh, full of pressure. But if that's really what you wanna pursue, then, then do it. Um, but you know, I'll remember that you, know, you don't have to be an attorney your whole career, that it can open a lot of doors like, like it has for me. So you know, if, if that's something you're truly interested, then, then, then please pursue it. And, and you know, his, his mom and dad will support him all the way. So yeah, so you're, you're basically telling your son to, to follow his bliss, do what he wants to do. And uh, you're not telling him that you have to do this because your dad did it or your family has a history of lawyers. Although he probably knows that. <laughs> yeah, he probably knows that, but yeah, certainly I don't want him to do it just because his father and, and other relatives are attorneys. Uh, he has to have that passion, that drive, and, and that applies for anything you pursue in life. Um, without the passion and purpose, you're just not gonna enjoy it and you won't be successful. Okay. Now, uh, you, you mentioned being executive director of Hawaii High School Athletic Association. You, you were that for quite a few years. 
but I wanted to kind of ask you questions. I mean, that, that's sports. So how, how did, I mean, what role has sports played in your life besides that? I mean, were you involved in sports before then? Or in, and, and, and where, where does sports go from, from there in your life? Or what, what, do you, how, what do you see sports as? So I, I always played sports from a very young age. Uh, from, we went from football to basketball to baseball, and I just did it throughout my, my youth. I always enjoyed sports. Um, I wasn't the best at it, believe it or not. Everyone assumes because I ran the high school athletic association. I must have been some, you know, high school and college superstar. I, I, actually, far from it. But I tell people that I'm a perfect example of the value of high school sports. You don't have to be a star to learn and grow from it. You know, I learned a lot of life skills playing sports that that have benefited me in my adult life. Um, I'm a firm believer that sports teaches you foundational skill sets like the value of hard work, uh, the value of teamwork, uh, of accountability, of, of discipline, uh, of even sportsmanship. That in life, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, and you're going to have to learn how to handle it. Uh, especially if you lose, you have to learn that um, things aren't always going to go your way and you need to pick up yourself, dust yourself off, and, and keep forging ahead. And, and uh, feeling sorry for yourself is is not productive and no one cares and uh, you, you need to do it all on your own and and, uh, and and learn to persevere. So sports to me is very valuable and it was underscored when I ran high school sports uh, in many situations, uh, especially from from middle income or, or lower income families. I mean, sports was a way out. Sports was a way to to go beyond high school, it was an opportunity to attend college, to have uh, college paid for you. And so, you know, I'm a, I was always a big believer in the value of sports. I became an even bigger believer in the value of sports when I ran the HHSA for 12 years. Um, I saw the profound impact that playing sports had on tens of thousands of young uh, men and women who played high school sports here in Hawaii. It also unifies the community. That's another thing. Um, sports goes beyond just the individual athletes, but I've seen the power of sports, especially when uh, our public high schools win state championships, whether it's Konawaina in girls basketball or Kahuku in football, or many years back, Molokai in, in baseball. Uh, when those schools win sports, it rallies the community, it excites them, and it just brings a huge source of pride throughout the community that, that propels uh, the student athletes and, and the entire community to strive and, and try to get ahead in life. Well, well you, you mentioned girls sports. What, what needs to be done for girls sports? That's come up a lot in the news also, and uh, including re recently about locker rooms, that type of stuff. What what needs to be done for girls sports in Hawaii now? Well, I mean, clearly more money needs to be allocated to girls facilities. I mean, we've seen and heard of the, the lawsuit filed by Campbell High School parents about the disparity in, in facilities for boys versus girls. Uh, but, you know, really, it, it's a incumbent on the legislature. It, it's been, frankly, a failure of the legislature to properly fund girls sports for the past 10, 20 years. These problems have existed for a long time. Uh, people like to blame the Department of Education, but uh, people have to understand the Department of Education gets its funding from the legislature. They don't have their own source of funding. They are at the mercy of the legislature. And so uh, it's great that um, a lot of our high schools are getting uh, increased funding for their, for their female student athletes, but it's way overdue, and I don't know why it didn't happen earlier. Uh, now, during my tenure, certainly I can't take all the credit, but I'm proud of the fact I was part of a, a renaissance, if you will, of, of girls' sports. Uh, during my tenure, we added many sports for girls that didn't exist before, starting with girls' wrestling. We were the, we were the first state in the country to, to create a sport for girls uh, in, in wrestling. Uh, previously, girls had to compete with the boys in wrestling, and obviously, there's a lot of challenges and difficulties and, and, and inequities in requiring girls to compete against boys. 
I'm proud of the fact that um, we, we were the first, we, we grew quickly, uh, other states have adopted girls wrestling. It eventually became an Olympic sport and Clarissa Chun from Roosevelt High School was a state champion and then became a medalist in, in the Olympics in, in women's wrestling. Uh, we also added during my tenure, golf as a girls sport, girls water polo, girls judo, uh, girls canoe paddling, uh, the list goes on. We also added a division two component so that our smaller schools can can participate and, and by the end of my tenure, we more than doubled the amount of girls state tournaments and more than doubled the amount of girls participating uh, in high school sports in Hawaii. And I'm, I'm very proud of that. I didn't know that, I, I wasn't aware of that. And, and that's good because it, it brings all the families together too, as you mentioned earlier, and it brings the kids some pride and some ability to, to compete. Now you, you, you know, you, you've held se several jobs and, and there's been some recent talk about elected officials holding second jobs. What's your position on that? Well, uh, each case is different and I frankly haven't thought about it too deeply, but I do know that um, uh, there was a law recently passed, I believe, that, that prohibits the, the governor and mayors from, from holding a second job. I support that. Um, I don't know how a mayor or governor would have time to have a second job. Uh, and, and I wouldn't want them to have a second job. I mean, being a governor or mayor is, is two, three, four, maybe even five jobs at once. I mean, it's almost an, an impossible task in and of itself. So uh, I support that. Frankly, I don't know if you even need to have a law for that, but now that we do, that's great. It's codified, it, it, it's, it's made clear that you can't hold a second job, but I don't know why any of them uh, would even think about having a second job. And then it also, in a lot of cases, eliminates <clears throat> the risk of a conflict of interest uh, in, in those situations, you know, where the employer that you're working a side job with uh, has, has business before the state or a county. It, it just eliminates that, that conflict of interest situation. Okay, well, yeah, all right. Uh, I I understand that, and uh, uh, we'll we'll have to see where that goes with respect to other elected officials. Also, now you were in a race, very close race for mayor of Honolulu. Uh, what did you learn from your mayoral campaign? Well, I tell you what, running a second time. Uh, I, want, I don't want to use the word easy because it's not easy uh, running uh, for a statewide office, but you learn a lot. Uh, the, uh, the second time around, you learn a lot from uh, what you did or didn't do the first time around. But the main takeaway I have from uh, running for mayor, <clears throat> excuse me, two years ago is that people want change. Um, it's no accident. I don't think that the top two uh, place finishers in the mayoral primary election two years ago uh, were first time candidates, were newcomers. Uh, people um, are dissatisfied with career politicians. Uh, they don't have faith in them. They don't have confidence in them and they want people who will bring legitimate change. And uh, like in the mayoral campaign and like in my current Lieutenant Governor campaign, uh, that's one of the things I'll bring uh, to the Lieutenant Governor position. I'll bring change, I'll bring uh, uh, new ideas, uh, innovation. I'll bring a community mindedness that doesn't exist with our current elected officials who are too beholden to lobbyists and other special interest groups. Uh, I, I take what I learned when I ran high school sports across the state. I've been to all 98 high schools across the state. I've been in every community. I worked directly with them. Even after I ran high school sports, I stayed in touch with all of the communities across our state. I know the leaders, I know their issues, and I know I can work together with them uh, to solve the many problems and challenges facing them today. Okay, well, let's, you know, let's talk about a broader question that's in the news a lot and uh, involves uh, some of the things you just talked about. How would you deal with guns, especially automatic rifles like AR-15s in the United States? I mean, let, let's assume you, you, you know, you, you had some say in that. What, how would you deal with it? 
Well, fortunately, we live in a state where we have some of the strictest gun control laws around. Uh, but having said that, you know, we, we must remain vigilant. Uh, we must make sure that our laws continue to safeguard the general public as a whole. Um, in terms of assault rifles or high capacity magazines, uh, I see no place for them in, in a civilized orderly, orderly society. Um, I think they should be and, and need to be banned on a, on a national level. But here locally, again, we need to keep reviewing our laws. We need to keep making sure that they're effective, basically to get guns out of the hands of people who have no business uh, holding or, or possessing a firearm. Uh, one of the things that I, I keep pushing on a broader level, but including in terms of gun safety and gun control, is more mental health treatment services uh, in, in Hawaii. Um, we're lacking that. Um, it's clearly an issue affecting many of those who are homeless uh, across our state. And so um, I, I think that not only will it address homelessness, it'll also uh, minimize and hopefully avoid the mass casualties that we've been seeing on the mainland. Uh, obviously, many of these people, if not all of them, can, are, are in need of mental health services and, and, and weren't getting them. And so I'm a huge advocate of increasing mental health services statewide. Okay, let me ask you a few quick questions. Is there anything Hawaii can do to help Ukraine or Ukrainians? Hawaii, the state. I'm sure there is, but uh, you know, that's to me more of a federal issue, better handled uh, on a national level in DC. Um, obviously we can do smaller scale things uh, like providing aid uh, uh, to, the, to, the, to the people of Ukraine, uh, whether it's you know, community donations or clothing or money or the like. Uh, we can also do our part if there are any Ukrainians, if we're allowed to, to take them in and uh, allow them a much safer place than, than in their home country, at least for now. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways but from a larger standpoint, a more uh, broad-based standpoint, uh, I defer to uh, the, our federal government as to how they uh, best help the people of Ukraine. Okay, well, I'm, I, we're, we're outside the box a little bit. Let's, wh wh where are you on abortion rights? I'm pro-choice, uh, you know, and, and I'm concerned about what seems to be an imminent decision by the U.S. Supreme Court uh, 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 undermining uh, the current Roe versus Wade law that, that's in our books. Uh, that's another issue, just like gun control, that we, we need to remain vigilant and, and uh, you know, not be complacent uh, to ensure that, that pro-choice uh, is still the stance that we take across the state. Now, having said that, there's still more that we can do irrespective of any change in the Roe v. Wade decision, uh, like providing more abortion services and rights. We still lack them in rural areas. We still lack them uh, on a sufficient basis uh, on our neighbor islands. So um, we still have more to do, despite the fact that we're a strong pro-choice state in, in our country. Okay, now here's a question that I, I get, I hear all the time, the, the cost of gas. How, how can we, what can we do about the cost of gas lowering it in Hawaii? Well, you know, the longer we're beholden to, to uh, fossil, uh, fossil fuels, you know, there's, there's not that much we can, we can do, Mark. And, and frankly, I mean, I, I, I switched to electric. Um, you know, I, I still pay more probably to, to charge my car because electricity rates are surely going to go up because of the higher cost of gas. But we need to move quicker uh, and more expeditiously towards 100% renewable energy. I mean, we need to get off our dependence on fossil fuels in Hawaii. And we have no excuse, frankly, to not be 100% renewable energy. We're one of the best places in the world in terms of having every uh, source of renewable energy at our disposal, whether it's uh, solar, wind, hydro, geothermal, and biomass. 
and let's just move much quicker so that we are no longer dependent on the whims of outside forces in terms of the impact on fuel prices here. Okay, I wanna ask you, you know, we, we live in Hawaii. Hawaii has its own history, its own stories. Uh, is there a favorite story that you have about Hawaii and its history that you could share with us? Well, there's a lot of uh, favorite stories I have, but the one most recently that, that uh, comes to mind is the uh, life story of Duke Kahanamoku. I mean, he was a fascinating human being. He was a tremendous ambassador uh, for our state. Uh, he brought a lot of pride and glory through his Olympic accomplishments, but he also was a great waterman here at home. He was a great lifeguard who saved many lives. And he was also, uh, you know, uh, uh, someone who embodied the aloha spirit, uh, which we're sometimes lacking or we need much more of in society today. And then I would also dovetail that with a more our, our modern version of Duke Kahanamoku, and that's Carissa Moore. Uh, Carissa Moore is another ambassador that embodies everything that is right and great about the state of Hawaii and all of us. Uh, she's accomplished. She's obviously, uh, you know, she's the current world surfing champion. She was the winner of the inaugural surfing competition in, in the Summer Olympics in Tokyo last year. And so she's another great role model that we should all model ourselves after. You know, that, that's interesting because they kind of fit your uh, sports background too. And I can see in your, you have a surfboard behind you, I think too. Is that your surfboard? Uh, I wish it was. It's actually Carissa Morris surfboard. Um, um, she was nice enough to, to gift me one of her surfboards. And so um, I proudly display it uh, as a memento from someone I, I deeply admire. And so, yeah, it, it's a Carissa surfboard. I own a surfboard. Um, it's much bigger because I'm not good at surfing. So I need something uh, that's basically a mini boat so I can actually stand on it without falling too often. Uh, but, you know, I maybe after the campaign, I'll, I'll get to surf more. I like to, but uh, it's been quite busy lately. Yeah, I, yeah, I can imagine. Um, okay. Now, um, you know, what, what, does the word pono mean to you? What do you have a do you have a feeling about that? The Hawaiian word pono. Well, I'll defer to my native Hawaiian friends as to the exact precise meaning of pono. But you know, my understanding uh, about pono is, is is about doing what is right, you know, and, and doing the right thing. And and I would expand that to you know being mindful of others. Um, you know, and, and being uh, or doing things that are for the greater good and just not about yourself. You know, that's the way I was taught. That's the way I try to live my life. And that's what I try to impart on my son is, is, is being right or doing the right thing at all times. And it's not always about me. It's about us. It's about everyone. And, and to me, uh, that's what makes Hawaii special. That's what I think in large part uh, is the reason you're living here and raising a family here and raise the family here. And that's why my wife and I are here and raising our son. Here. Okay. All right. I, I, I like, I like what you just said. Um, now we, we're, we're you're, you're talking about advice to young people uh, and we're facing a lot of tragedies and disappointments nowadays and, and what, what more would you advise a young person about how to deal with these things, with these tragedies and disappointments today? How, how, what's your advice? Well, I, that life has its ups and downs, but we, we, you just can't give up. Uh, uh, it's also important that, that younger people in particular uh, participate in, in our community participate in, in our, our democracy. And, and that's as simple as registering to vote and voting. You know, there's a lot of people out there and I'm not just saying younger people, but people, uh, adults as a whole who have a lot of suggestions uh, and a lot of complaints uh, are unhappy with the direction our state is headed. 
Uh, but the most important thing you need to do is, is to is to vote uh, and and get get people you feel best represents you uh, and your communities into office. Uh, voting turnout has improved in Hawaii, but it's a long ways from where we need it to be. I mean, we need to have everybody participate in voting and 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 just get involved and don't throw up your hands and give up. I know it's easy to be disillusioned, uh, to think that your voice doesn't matter, but collectively it really does. And that's, you know, one bit of advice I'd give to younger people is get involved and, 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 and speak up uh, and, and make yourself heard. Yeah, and, and it seems like what you're saying about getting involved has a deeper meaning too. I mean, it, it helps people just emotionally and uh, with their, their mental state I think also uh, to be involved and to and to be talking with people and and that's what you're advocating is what that's what I hear you saying is that right? That's that's correct. I mean, there's no question when you get involved, get out in the communities, you you learn so much uh, uh, about the issues and challenges facing people, and you 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 feel compelled to do your part. I mean, that's a big reason I'm running for office because. I've seen in all of our communities across the state over the past 20 some odd years, the frustration, the concerns, the fears that they have about how are they gonna make ends meet? Uh, how can they continue on and, and, and stay and afford to live in Hawaii when costs keep going up and up and up with no help from government in sight uh, in the long term? Okay, we have about a minute left. We've talked about a lot of out of the box stuff. Do you have any words of wisdom or a favorite quote? I, I love quotes, okay, uh, that inspires you or that uh, you would like to share with us. Well, one quote I, I, I like to use and I've heard quite often is to uh, much is given, much is expected. And I've been blessed throughout my life. I've had a lot of mentors. I've had a lot of people help and guide me along the way. And uh, I, I want to do my part to, to pay it forward, if you will, and help the next generation. Uh, it, it's important uh, for the viability of any, of any uh, high functioning society that, that you always prepare for the next generation. You always try to make you know, their life better than, than yours was. And, and um, I really believe that. And I wanna do my part to, to build a better future for my son and <laughs> his friends uh, and the generations even after him that come. Okay, well, uh, yeah, and you you feel like you would like to play it forward, okay? I I and you've received a lot, and we live in Hawaii, where being just being in Hawaii is a lot to me. Uh, it's a gift, you know. I, that's how I view it. We're we're fortunate to live in the best place in the world, but. We're fraying at the edges, there's challenges ahead and, and we need to take action uh, sooner than later. Uh, and it starts with getting involved in the political process and getting involved in your communities. Okay, well, Keith, I appreciate you being my guest today. Uh, you know, best wishes, aloha. Thanks for having me, aloha, Mark. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.